Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, Andrew and I are going to tell you everything we've learned about running martial arts events. If you don't know, we host a few events. We've hosted them for several years. And guess what? We've gotten better at doing it. So we're going to bring you behind the scenes on what we've done to make those events better so you cannot make the same mistakes that we've made. You can learn from us, right? If you're new to the show, thanks for being here. Welcome. My name is Jeremy Lesniak, joined by my good friend, Andrew Adams. And here on Martial Arts Radio, we we have one goal in three parts. <laughs> I mean, it's three goals. I don't know. How do we say that? <laughs> We're here to connect, educate, and entertain the martial artists of the world en route to Whistle Kick's big overarching goal of getting everybody in the world to train for at least six months. Why? Because we believe martial arts brings out the best in us. And the world could stand to be a better place. People could stand to be better versions of themselves. And so we're doing everything we can to encourage people to train and to keep them training. And that's why we do what we do. And if that mission resonates for you, maybe you're a passionate martial artist and you think, you know what, Jeremy? Yeah, I know martial arts has made me better and I want other people to experience this. Or maybe you're a martial arts school and you say, you know, I would love to be able to, to connect with more students and help them along in their life's journey. Well, head on over to whistlekick.com because we don't just do one or two things. We have Whistlekick Alliance, which is our program for martial arts schools. There's nothing like it in the world. It's pretty incredible. We have a Patreon for all of you. You could join patreon.com slash whistlekick. But we've also got apparel and protective equipment and training programs and so many other things that you can buy to support us to help us on our mission, right? Whatever your budget, there's something in there for you. You could even sign up for all in weekend because you could, unless you're watching this in or listening to this in the future. And we've reached the, uh, the point where it's sold out because it usually sells out. So anyway, uh, anything I missed in the intro, Andrew? No, except that when you were talking about the things you could buy, I was going to be like, and shirts and go like this and realize no, you can't buy this shirt. This is a special shirt. You can't buy that shirt. No, the all in weekend shirts are only for attendees. Now I, I just want to make sure the audience knows. We are going to talk about events that we host, and yeah, hopefully we encourage you to attend our events, but that's not the purpose of this episode. If you've been around for a while, when we do these episodes that are tied back to something that we make or do, we we do our best to make sure that there is information in here, regardless of whether you attend or buy or whatever, right? We're we're still trying to give you the the meat of the subject, so to speak. Yeah. The expectation is that this is not a commercial. Yeah. we're We're not trying to make this a commercial. So, Andrew, just a couple weekends ago, we had our third annual Whistle Kick All In Weekend, and it was great and exhausting and fun and good training and good people, and it took me days to recover. You know, it's funny. I, 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 I don't feel the same way. Everything that you started with, yep, yep, I'm on board. It really didn't take me days to recover because we... I did not feel nearly as burnt out after this year's weekend than I did the first couple of years. Nor did I. Nor did I. We we had we had some help this year yeah. and things went went better. One of the things of we that. learned. I also think you function on less sleep better than I do. Absolutely, without a doubt. Yeah, you've been pretty public. You've got some insomnia. So I think you've you've become acclimated to less sleep. Yeah. Me. Yeah. But but that weekend, you know, we, we, we do early morning trainings. I mean, we were up and training at 6.30 in the morning. Yep. Uh, I'm not centered in frame here. I'm going to fix that. But, but you know, I, I went to bed at a reasonable hour. Like, I got decent sleep that weekend. And, you know, and I would think most of the attendees got pretty decent sleep as well. Yes, they were getting up early because we had class at 6.30 a.m. But people weren't going to bed at, that I know of at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, well, they were tired, so they went to bed. Exactly. Now, of course, this is the third year we've done All In Weekend. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have hosted Free Training Day slash Now Martial Summit. Last year was the seventh year, right, of Free Training Day? I think that's correct, yeah. And it was your third year of being involved? Correct. Third? Third. Okay. So you weren't there at the very beginning of Free Training Day. But 
we've talked about that that event before on this show and 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 what it was and the first thing i think i want to kind of put on the table for us to talk about is how you start a thing because i think there are a lot of people who whether we're talking about an event or a podcast or a book or martial arts training they run so far past the start line that they get overwhelmed and they're yeah. not willing to start because it's 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 overwhelming it's just it's so much pressure because you look at you know and honestly we we we've put we were actually just talking about this this morning we've put out the call to say that if you have things you want to contribute on our platform of martial arts radio reach out we'll we'll talk about putting an episode together with you and we've had very little outreach on that and our speculation is that people think that it needs to be up here to start when it doesn't. Mm. Where do you start? At the beginning, when you're terrible. Yeah. A journey of a thousand steps starts with but a single step, right? You gotta you have to start somewhere and and you know, my initial advice to anything you're gonna do is to start small. It doesn't have to be way up here and you don't have to do every like you might have these ideas on I want to do this and I want to do this and 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 this uh, this is gonna take me forever I'm just not gonna do it well what if you do an event that only has this this and this and that's it like that's still an event when when we put on events now you know because we've gotten a lot more clarity on what makes a successful event there's what you do what you don't do and what you leave to chance. Yeah. And you might think if you never put on an event before that the leaving to chance is, is terrible. And my instinct early on was I wanted to leave nothing to chance. But what we found, and, and it may seem counterintuitive, is that openness for at least some of what you do is where the absolute best things are going to happen. Those organic moments. Yeah. The things that you... At every event you and I have thrown, which now at this point is six, three all in weekends and three free training days, at every single one of them, there have been things that we did not plan that made the event so much better. And some of those things we will they happened organically and we're like well we can't change this this was so good like next year we have to do this as well and i think there's something to be said for planning quote unquote planning for what's unplanned yeah yeah and a great example at the very first all in weekend we had pretty much every minute of the day scripted there were some breaks but we had people running with training until late into the evening the whole time. And one of the things that you and I noticed pretty quickly was that people loved the training. They were having a great time. But by the about midday, you know, about halfway through, these people had formed such strong relationships with each other that they wanted social time. Yeah, and I, yeah. I remember this very vividly. You and I, I think it might have even been your idea that we stepped aside and said, you know, they they need some space they need more time we need let's let's cut this session off let's extend this break and let them hang out yeah give them that that opportunity to bond um yeah. here's another example from their first year that that we hadn't necessarily planned on but it just happened uh is people signing shirts being such a big thing yeah you know we you know we're both wearing all in weekend shirts um you know we the it's called all in weekend cuz we thought if you're going to come to this event you're going to be you're all in you're going to live on site you're going to eat there you're going to, we're all going to sleep together like this isn't like uh and nothing against these types of events but you know a martial arts event where you go and you get a hotel room and you know people are all over in different it's places a different experience we yeah, wanted absolutely. to create something different we we didn't want that type of experience we wanted everyone to be all in so we called it all in weekend and so the first year's logo was uh, and I'm not going to tell you, you're going to have to watch on YouTube. That's right. So here was the first year's logo, obviously has something to do with all in. Yeah. And then last year's logo is this one here. Again, I'm not going to tell you what it is. You got to go to YouTube to watch. 
and then Jeremy's and then wearing year, last year. Right? You know, We've already got next year's plan. And some of you might be able to guess if you're watching. There's a theme. Um, but what we found is with the first year shirt, uh, it is a white shirt. And we had lots of Sharpies around because people wanted to – not people. You and I wanted people to wear name tags. Yeah. So there were we lots of Sharpies around. Our events, by the way. Yeah. Um, talk about that in a minute. And so people were like, will you sign my shirt? And I'm like, oh, yeah, great. And we – Everybody ended up, not everybody signed every shirt. Some people didn't want their shirt signed, but we left that as an option. And it was a thing last year and was absolutely a thing this year as well. So it wasn't something that we necessarily planned on, but was something that people really got enjoyment out of. Yeah. Uh, Name tags. It's something that we found pretty early on. And I think this even predates you that when someone can, can, quickly articulate someone's name it breaks down barriers and it has been so powerful for us at our events that at my martial arts school everybody wears a name tag including me every class Hmm. interesting makes it a lot easier for me as an instructor when i have new students especially if i have several join it at once yeah happened two weeks ago i think we had three three new people on the floor at one time i'm not great with names Made it a lot easier. Yeah, no, that's great. So name tags, organic moments. One of the things that, you know, let's come back to where those organic moments come from, right? It's the space between here's what you do and what you don't do. It's guardrails, it's parameters. You know, those are words that come up a lot with kind of the the whistle kick ethos at not just events, but how we train and things like that. And If you leave things completely open, people don't know where to start. But if you give them a starting point, I want you to do this, right? Like the number one way I use AI is to give me a starting point. Hey, I'm going to write an article for Marshall Journal. Uh, I'm, what should I write about? And no matter what comes back, it usually makes me go, I don't like any of these, but it gives me an idea to write about this as opposed to <laughs> what should I write about? And I sit there for 20 minutes with nothing. Yeah. Right? yeah. I can write the article in 20 minutes. Okay. So the idea of what you do is pretty obvious, right? It's, you know, if it's, if it's free training day, it's the structure of that event. It's securing the presenters. It's getting the logist, the space, the logistics, those things. I think everybody understands that and they're probably on board with us about the, the space in between, but what about the not do? That's not, that's something that people might not be familiar with when they put together an event. You want to speak to that? Yeah. So first off your first year that you run an event, you're not going to know what not to do. You're going to run your event. Um, my recommendation talked about earlier, make it small. It doesn't have to be huge, but after that event is over, that's when, in my opinion, you start to look at, okay, next year, what do we not do? Right. Yeah. Inevitably, and maybe I'm wrong, ho- hopefully, hopefully I'm wrong. Inevitably, there will be something that didn't go the way you wanted it to in a good or a bad way. Um, there are things that didn't run the way you wanted them to things that could have been done better, that's when you look at for next year, what can you not do? But I I don't think your first year you're going to necessarily know what not to do unless you're planning on doing, like I said at the beginning, this and 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 this. If it's too much, something's going to, you're going to drop some plates, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, It's a good point. When we think about a first year event, one of our goals at, at Whistlekick, not just for you and I, Andrew, but one of our goals overall is we break even. And that means we go as simple as we can. Yep. How do we get the space donated uh, or as inexpensive as possible? How do we keep the cost for attendees as low as possible? How do we um, maybe sell some merch, some shirts or something along the side to cover some of those costs? We don't try to make money the first time we do a thing. Yeah, We try to break even. And free training day lost money, not much, but lost money until the two years ago. Yep. 2022 was the first year free training day. Didn't lose money. 
the fifth time we did it. Yeah, fourth time. The, fourth sixth time. Time, the sixth time. Fifth time. Because we've done six, right? We've done seven. Okay, we've done seven. All right. <laughs> it's hard to keep track, everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it took six six tries to to figure that out. And if we had tried to monetize early on, it would have been big. It would have been complicated. And, and the irony is it probably would have lost even more money. Yeah. And that's a really good point. Um, now we're not advocating throwing events that you know, you're going to lose money at, but you know, looking at ways to at least, like you said, break even would be the way to go. Distilling it down to in, in the, if you're in the entrepreneurial space, you might be familiar with the concept of MB, MVP, minimum viable product. This idea that what is the simplest version of what you're trying to ultimately do and releasing that as quickly as possible. Because yeah, you're going to screw stuff up regardless. You're going to have organic moments, hopefully, regardless that you hadn't anticipated. And the sooner you can put that out there for people, the sooner you can make it better and do more and, and make it great. Right. And you know, we've learned from our mistakes, so to speak, with the events that we've put on. And when we put on other events, we try to make sure we don't do certain things, but we also recognize that every event's going to be a little different. If you've been to one of the other free training days, we've had free training days in Atlanta, Philadelphia, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington. This year we're bringing one to Lenexa, Kansas. They're all a little different. Absolutely. And that's by design. Instead of trying to force things into this box, we say, okay, let's let this event develop its own ethos, <clears throat> culture. Yep. And so we have the, you know, here's what you can't do. As an example, with free training day, we call the people leading sessions presenters, not teachers. Mm -hmm. It has to be free to attend. You can't charge money, right? There are a handful of things like that. What do you do? Well, you know, there's some stuff around marketing. We call it free training day. Uh, you know, the logos are themed across the events, right? Little stuff like that. But there's a lot that happens in between that is kind of fun and, and allows those events to develop their own personality. And be unique to themselves. Yep. And, and be unique. Yeah. yeah. What else? What else? Um, if, you, if you were starting a first time event, whether it's martial arts or not, might you... Think about telling people. I'm, I'm thinking of something. I wonder if you've got anything. Um, I mean, I, I think having a theme, mm. depending on the event that you're doing, you know, we already talked a little bit about All In Weekend and why we came up with that, mm. that wordage. Um, and it helped lead us to our logos. Um, but having a theme of your plan through the weekend or day or whatever, whether you're doing a day event or a weekend event or whatever, um, can really help in the future, continuing to grow your event. Now, again, we're, if you're doing this for the first time, the first year, you can come up with a theme, but it won't be apparent to everybody else per se. Mm -hmm. But that, as that you can, can be entirely internal, it can be a reference point that you, you use for how you plan and present. Exactly. Exactly. And as you even grow, if you start holding this event at other places and, you know, I'll, I'll bring up free training day as an example. Uh, the first year that we did free training day outside of new England, we held an event in Atlanta, Georgia and one in Portland, Oregon. And up until then, all of the free training day events had been in the Northeast and you and I, or whomever would come up with a logo that we would use. And it was a whistle kick free training day, you know, 2019, whatever. And it was fine. But we looked at, because now we're holding the event in other locations, quote unquote, same event, but different. We wanted there to be some synergy between the logos used. And so in 2022, it was mountains because the second most hiked mountain in the world is the next town over from Keene, New Hampshire. Like you can see Mount Monadnock from Keene and it's the second most hiked mountain in the world. Well, Mount Hood in Portland, Oregon 
has a very distinctive look to it. Yeah, if you've ever um, if you've ever been to Portland, you've seen Mount Hood. You can't yeah, avoid it. Yeah, uh, it's not as hiked as Mount Monadnock, though. Uh, no, but I more people die on it. That, well, that's true. And then uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, Stone Mountain is a very well-known mountain in that area. So we went with mountains. Um, last year, we went with trees. So mm -hmm. each tree on each shirt for uh, Northeast, Mid-Atlantic, and Pacific Northwest in Seattle was a tree native to that region. This yeah. year, it's something different. I'm not going to tell you what it is because they haven't been released yet, but they're pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be fun. But they are unique you know, to each of the areas that the free training day happens. Right. right. One of the things we haven't talked about, and I think it's really important, and if you go back, if anybody out there has read my first book, How Not to Hold a Martial Arts Tournament, which really <laughs> is about martial arts events, not just tournaments. Because I'm thinking, you know, a, a lot of the people who might be paying attention to this episode might never plan on doing a, a free training day sort of event or a weekend event. Maybe it's rank testing. Maybe they do an in-house competition, right? Yeah. Smaller sort of, you know, just for their own students. Nothing wrong with that. But a lot of the stuff we're talking about is still the same. And here's one that we haven't mentioned. It's the theme in that book, getting buy-in from the people who are involved. Hmm. And that, if you don't do that, a lot of things can go awry regardless of the kind of event. So for example, let's say you're having a rank testing and in your world, rank testing is something that you try to get your whole school to and families, you know, you want everybody to be there. Well, how do you get them bought into the idea of, of watching that? Well, if all you do is put out chairs and expect them to sit there for six to eight hours, you're not getting buy-in. They're going to come once yeah. and they're probably not going to come again. So how do you do that? Well, you could do things like having food. You could have, you could make sure they knew that, you know what, if you're not watching your loved one testing at that point, um, you know, it's okay to go out here or maybe there's a, 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 you know, a different, a separate area, or maybe you're telling them your loved ones will be testing from this time to this time, but we want everybody here for the celebration at this time, right? There are a lot of different ways you could do it. And what I think that really requires is temporarily put aside tradition, put aside history, put aside habit, forget about that for a moment. You can always bring it back and say, if I was going to design this, this event from scratch, and here were the things that were most important to me. So if having everybody in your martial arts community attend these events, this particular event was really important to you, well, you'd want to make sure that it was convenient, it was inexpensive, it was entertaining, mm -hmm. and that you avoided distractions in competition, right? You know, don't, don't have it on the same day as the town fair or something, right? Yeah, yeah. That, and, and that makes sense. Obviously, you're going to want to keep the, those things in mind. As your event grows, you also might want to consider how to incentivize the attendees that came your first year to come the next year. Yeah. This is something we're still working on, but we're getting better at. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we've done a few things. And it, it might be interesting to those of you out there to, to, to think about this that money is not the only thing that incentivizes people. It is only one of the things. And we have learned that for a lot of people, money is not the biggest driver. That, you know, uh, an early bird discount can help. Um, a package deal can help. But other things that motivate people, social standing, mm -hmm. um, whether that's, you know, positive or negative reinforcement, right? Hopefully you're going positive, but negative reinforcement can still apply. Uh, exclusivity, right? So one of the things that you don't see on the back of these shirts, and, and, and I don't think we need to try to turn around and show it, but um, they have numbers on them. You know, my, my shirt, the 2024 shirt has a number. What do we do for us, Andrew? Double zeros? Yes. Yeah, we have double zeros on the back and then... Everybody else 
has a number based on the order in which they signed up, which we tested a theory. We thought, you know what? I bet that will encourage them to sign up early. Uh, guess what it did? Yeah. It and worked better than the financial discount alone. Yeah. Because just and as an aside for all in weekend, if you attend, you get the best possible pricing for next year if you sign up really early before we even release it to the public. Yeah. So what, what that means essentially is uh, if you, those people that attended 2024's all in weekend, they were given two weeks to pay for 2025. They got the best price available. The only people that will get that price is those that were there in 2024. So as of this recording right now, you can go, <coughs> excuse me, you can, you know, we still have some spots available for all in weekend, uh, 2025, but, uh, the cost right now is I'm racking my brain. 309. 309, right? The people that registered that were there last year, they paid less than 309. They got a discount. And if you attend, it wasn't a huge discount, but it was, it was, yeah. it was a discount. It was, and if you attend doing. in 2025, you will get the lowest price possible to pay for 2026. Now getting back to the number thing, and, and I'm not going to mention his name, although he has publicly said so there is a person that this year had the second highest number. So he was the second to last person to register. Uh, and he, his first year was last year, 2023. And again, that year he registered very late. And then for 2024, he registered very because late. Because we didn't make it compelling enough for him because it wasn't just about money for him. Correct. We gave this two-week window to purchase for next year. And he was one of the 60% of people that registered for next year paid for it full in advance because he values the weekend enough. And he made it publicly known, I did this because I wanted a low number. It's just a number on the back of a shirt. Yeah, it's it's bragging rights, right? It's exclusivity. Yeah. It, it's, it's fun, right? We're trying to make this fun. So what are some of the other things that incentivize people? We said money. We said social standing. Mm -hmm. We said exclusivity or scarcity, right? People like things that other people don't have. What are some of the other things? Those are the biggies. I'm sure mm. we're leaving something off the table. I mean, getting oh, um, get go ahead. here's I mean, getting something different. You know, last year, uh, if yep. you registered by a certain time, you would get extra perks. So you would get a water bottle. Last year, uh, attendees got a whistle kick all in weekend 2023 water bottle. <laughs> Um, and a notebook and some other things, you know, themed yep. for the event. Yep. One of the other things that you can do is offering, and this, this is something that um, if my students are, are watching this, this will, they will probably be public before we release this episode, but maybe not. Um, one of the things that we're going to start doing is having classes for blue belts and up specific mm -hmm. classes, right? You know, not, not every week, um, but hopefully that will incentivize people because I'm finding some of my students rank isn't a big deal for them. And we've talked about that on the show and, and why I'm approaching that a little bit differently, but they all want to train more and they all want to learn more. Okay. Well, so we're going to gatekeep this class behind being a certain rank. Mm -hmm. You could do the same thing with your event. If you have attended this event, you also could go to this event, or if you've done X, you could also participate in why mm -hmm. we we're at this interesting point in the world where I think physical goods, they've become so cheap. You know, most of us can afford most of what we want. Definitely almost all that we need. Right. And if you, if you can't get everything that you need, you might not be listening to the show and you might have other concerns. So let's put that aside. But if I want, you know, clothes, I can buy clothes, you know, they might be cheap clothes, but I can get them. So because that has happened, I'm watching people put more priority on experiences, mm. going to events, seeing people, things that Doing you can't things. buy, but in a sense, you can buy them, right? Because you, you get access to them. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a big part of what we do is we provide experiences through our events, through our content, et cetera, things that you have to spend maybe some money, but you have to spend your time. 
yeah. because time is the one thing we can't get back. Yeah, good point. Okay. So we've talked about a lot of things, you know, the, the, the do's and the don'ts and the space in between. We've talked about incentivizing. We've talked about starting small, break even. We've talked about a bunch of that stuff. And I, I got the sense that people are probably wrapping their heads around this. Is there anything we've missed? I'm not sure, but I'm hoping that our listeners will tell us. Yeah. If there's something that we haven't talked about that you have a question on, please let us know. You know, we can easily do, you know, a part two of this episode. If you have a very specific question, reach out. We will help you. Um, if you're not in the Facebook group, Martial Arts Radio, we can, you know, you can post a comment in there. You can post it at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. It's so many places. If you want this information, you know, and, and let's be honest, if you ever want to hold an event, we would love to, to offer you some advice. Uh, maybe it's an event we can partner on with you. We've got some some things that we we do really well at Whistlekick, and you know we've had the opportunity to help some folks have more successful events. Sometimes there's a, a profit arrangement. Sometimes there isn't. Sometimes we just you know we trade for putting our name on it, right? Like you know sponsored by, right? You know it's. I throw back to the beginning of the episode. We said it in the intro. Why are we here? To get people into training and keep them training. And if your event is going to help people, make them excited, get them in the door, well, let's let's work together on it. Absolutely. Awesome. Last chance, Andrew. Anything else? No, nope, I think we're good. All right. Cool, man. To the audience, thank you. Reach out if you need. Jeremy at Whistlekick.com, Andrew at Whistlekick.com. Our social media everywhere you can think of is at Whistlekick. If you want to support us, if you're a school, please check out Whistlekick Alliance, WKAlliance.com. If you are an individual who does not have a school, check out the Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Whistlekick. And of course, Whistlekick.com for all the things that you might buy, including all-in weekend registration, which you can't get a discount on. We don't do discounts on events, but you could use the code PODCAST15 to save yourself 15% on a shirt or a training program or one of our cool dragon hoodies or protective gear or a whole bunch of other cool stuff that's over there. So if you haven't checked it out in a while, go ahead, check it out. And I'll tell the audience, if you go to Whistlekick.com and buy a t-shirt, I will personally make sure you can get in to free training day for free. <gasps> Which one? Any of them? You know what? Any of them. Oh, man, that's such a great deal. The yep. idea that that just by buying a t-shirt. Any t-shirt, Andrew? Any t-shirt. Any t-shirt. And we've got some t-shirts on there that are barely $20. We do free shipping on all that stuff. Anyway, so for about 20 bucks, you could get into four different free events for this year free. alone. Yep. There you go. I can't think of a better deal at all. Love it. Uh, and in case you're listening to this and not watching this, and maybe you're a little distracted because you're listening while you're doing other things, that is all satire. It's free training day. It doesn't cost anything. <laughs> All right, let's wrap here. Thank you, my friend. And thank you to all of you out there. I appreciate you spending some time with us today. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.